Well, salutations, kindred spirits, and welcome to another weekly Wednesday magic lesson. Yep, we're doing it again. Yeah, I'm doing it again in this thing. Uh, hopefully the last time you'll see me in this contraption. Have a doc appointment tomorrow. Hoping to get the thumbs up, up, that we can move forward with the thumb and the hand and that. But hopefully the news on that will be no news moving forward. That's my plan and moving forward, let's get started. And this lesson should be interesting as it is a bit ambitious. My goal today is to tell you how to be a great magician. Not a good magician, a great magician. So I boiled this down to about three topics. I think we can cover it in about five minutes. That's all it takes to be great. Stick with me, buckle up, get your notepads out, and let's learn how to be great. All right, tip number one, never be done. Yeah, always keep a student's mindset. Yeah, you can always be learning in magic, always something. Usually it's tricks, although tricks are the last thing we need, really. What we need are things to make our tricks better. Maybe we can learn new slights to make the tricks look better, or even better, maybe we can craft new scripts to build our, our presentation of the trick up, or, or per, perhaps we're working on our audience management, our direction or misdirection, stage movement. Point being, it can always be something. And in this day and age, there's so many great learning resources. I mean, when I was a, a, a young magician, we had books and some videos. Today, we have everything at our fingertips right here. It's on the black mirror that you're looking at now. You can go on to Google and learn pretty much anything you want. So I, I, I hope your goal is to keep that student's mindset. Maybe I can recommend something here for, for the student who wants to be a great magician. I'm going to drop a suggestion of maximum entertainment this is ken weber's book he just released an updated version 2.0 this is not a typical trick book there's no real magic tricks in here it's more of a book of professional advice and even if your goal is not to be a professional i think some of the subject matter taught in this book will lead you on a path to greatness so i'll drop a link in the description you can consider that as your studious endeavor moving forward but whatever you do uh, be it a book or keep learning you can always improve even when you're look i still improve i'm an old guy guys older than me keep learning right tip de a uh, dose piece tip number two <clears throat> Have a strong work ethic. Yeah, you're gonna need that, a strong work ethic, because, because this, magic is hard. Good magic is hard. Great, great magic is very hard. So if, if, you, if you plan on being good, you're gonna wanna put in that practice, 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 the old three rules, although I, I like these rules. To be great, you do this. To be great, you practice, you, you know, do the, lots of practice, all you can. But then you wanna rehearse. Instead of just, you, know, you want to get your, maybe your tricks in sets of three and uh, pr pr practice them with presentations. Even better, take it to the next level and dress rehearse. Wear the clothes you'll be wearing. Work out your pocket management, maybe your reset techniques. Pr practice with, if you mess up, keep going, you know, pr present it as though it was real life situations. You know, work hard at these things and, and that's a path to greatness. But it's much more than that, right? There's like, maybe this, maybe some viewers here, maybe some of my younger viewers have aspirations to be a professional magician. Well, if that is your aspiration, this early hard work of learning how to present magic properly is only the tip of the iceberg because there's a lot of hard work that goes into being a professional magician. The, you know, the client relations, promoting yourself, you know, de developing a website, maintaining it. There's so much. Uh, again, this book I recommended, Maximum Entertainment, that'll talk about some of those topics. If you are interested in being a great magician, check out the book, the link's in the description. But yeah, so uh, if you are a, a studious young magician, consider maybe some college years, you know, maybe take some uh, sales or business courses, maybe a little theater to, you know, uh, get your head in the ball game of what you're gonna be working at moving forward and F and or when the magic ball drops out, then you have a fallback. And this is good advice, trust me, trust me, it's good advice. And that's tip number two. And for tip number three, let's take a look at some of the great, some of the great magicians from my lifetime, talking about guys like Doug Henning, who, who broke the mold, the tuxedo magician. Doug did his own thing. Harry Anderson, one of my childhood idols. Harry the Hat, the con man character, so good. Penn and Teller, another, another one of my early inspirations, the bad boys of magic. 
here I sit. I feel like I'm in a bad Brady Bunch episode. We have David Blaine, the kid from New York who doesn't say much, but somehow managed his way to magic superstardom. These are, look, these are all great magicians and they all have something in common. I'm wondering, do you know what it is? And you won't need to think too long. Let me tell you what it is. Here's what they have in common. Not much. They don't have anything in common really because they all have tip number three, a unique point of view. They have a style. They have, they, they have a, a concept, they have a, a viewpoint to present their magic, be it the hippie style of Doug Henning or the big cat partner magic of a Siegfried and Roy or the debonair Lance Burton, Harry the Hat, right? They all have a way of looking at the world or our art in, at the very least in a unique way. And if you can find that for yourself, well, there, there you found the secret to being really great. So. That's tip three. It's the most important one. It's the reason I did this video today. And I hope some of you made it this far and take this advice to heart. Find your point of view. All right, well, that's gonna be a wrap. It's a wrap on my three tips towards greatness. Here they are again. Number one, keep your student's mindset. Always be learning because you always can in magic. There's always room for improvement. And to do that, you're gonna need a strong work ethic because yeah, good magic is hard. Good magic is hard and great magic is harder because you need a strong point of view. And if you're one of the lucky ones to find that, I wish you the best on your pursuits. And regardless of that, I thank you for spending some time with me today. I do appreciate your energy your enthusiasm and yeah that is a wrap thanks guys i'm gonna see you on the next one and hey ciao for now two